I mean, this is changing. You know, you guys don't need us for, you don't need us to have children anymore. You don't, re, you don't need us to make money. You don't need us to protect you, right? All the things a hundred years ago you needed a man for, you don't. But there is some place in your heart that you can't lead yourself and that's masculine value. You're listening to the Almost 30 Podcast, a lifestyle podcast hosted by Krista Williams and Lindsay Simsek. Tune in for a new episode every Tuesday to hear our honest conversations about topics like wellness, entrepreneurship, spirituality, and self-development with guests who are really smart, really inspirational, and really fucking funny. (laughs) It's real, it's raw, and it's unfiltered. Inspired by our transition from our 20s to our 30s, we realize it's so much more than that. Our mission is to provide you with the tools, guidance, and motivation to help you navigate any transitions in your life and propel your personal growth. Thanks so much for tuning in to the Almost 30 Podcast. Here we go. It's Valentine's Week here at Almost 30 Podcast. Happy Valentine's Day. Part of me cares, part of me doesn't. I know, literally. <laughs> what, what does this mean? What it's is so all funny. this hubbub? It's so funny when like you start thinking about it kind of like early on in the new year. Mm-hmm. You're like, oh, right. Like that's coming up. Like that exists. What does that mean? Like mm-hmm. it's just like a weird time. Mm-hmm. Just take a damn bubble bath. <laughs> Justin's cute. He made a reservation like a week ago. Oh, sweetheart. Where are you going to go? I don't know. Some it's place- called um, Chef's Not Home. It's like a new place in LA. So <laughs> love could, him. Could be good. Is it for you or him? For us. Meaning, like, is it vegan or? Oh, good both? fucking question. <laughs> good question that. Fucker better be thinking about me. He's like, babe, it's a new steakhouse. Literally. <laughs> He's like, have you heard of meat? <laughs> um, so that's what we'll be doing. And then we're going to have so our nice. event. Oh, yeah. It's going to be so yeah, good. It's gonna we be have so our good. Galentine's event. This is coming out on the day of. The day of. Yeah. So, hey, See we're headed there. there. We're headed there yeah. soon, guys. Yeah. We'll be there tonight. <laughs> um, at the Fairmont. Hotel in mm-hmm. Mir- Miramar? Fair- Fairmont Miramar in Santa Monica. I always say that weird. I know. It's like a, it's such a beautiful space. So it's going to be so fun, like 40 to 50 babes. We have Milana Snow there. She's an amazing Reiki healer. Um, so she'll provide heart healing on everyone there. Um, I've been healed by her and it was amazing. Changed the mm-hmm. game for my meditation practice for the next couple of months um, till I fucked my whole jive up again. <laughs> Um, and then we're also going to play fun games, just tell some stories, have some cocktails, eat some amazing food, take some pics. Yeah. Get some blowouts. It'll be nice. It's like 80 in LA. Sorry to rub it in, but yeah. like, it's going to be chill. It's going to be very chill. <laughs> very chill, but everyone's going to be cute. We're going to be like, yeah. our yoga clothes. A little dressed up. Yeah. We're always in yoga clothes at our events. So we thought we'd switch it up. Mm-hmm. You know, it's always nice to get totally. a little dressed up. Yeah. Every once in a while. We're so excited. We have a this, double episode week. Guys, this is Lindsay's favorite episode we've ever recorded. It is. And I hate to say that because I love everyone. Mm-hmm. So let me preface this by saying that. Um, we've had so many this amazing is, like, guests. fucked up good. But this is, I want, if I had like the means to do it and I will eventually, I would love to just work with him on some stuff. Totally. Or with someone, like he has kind of like a crew of people that he works he with and work, teachers. workshops Love and stuff. That. Like I just kind of want to like, want that to be like a consistent thing because I don't know. I mean, it's not just romantic relationships. He was talking about relationships between parent and child, mm-hmm. between like, you know, family and friend. Like it's, it goes beyond romantic. Obviously that's the main thing we'll be talking about, but I was just blown Away. So our guest is John Wineland, and he is incredible. Incredible. He's an LA based guy. Uh, this is this is like yeah, this is really gonna be <laughs> something. He is a LA based speaker and teacher. Um, he leads men and women in the practices of embodied masculine leadership, spiritual intimacy, and sexual polarity. So we talk a lot about the feminine and masculine energies that run through all of us. We oh man. What do we cover? We cover um, what do men and women want from each other? Mm -hmm. um, And in what ways can we effectively, and that sounds a little, um, 
you know, scientific, but like effectively like ask for it and in a way that makes them feel seen and heard. Mm -hmm. One thing we talked about metabolizing like the energy that the opposite sex or the same sex or your partner is putting out, which was so interesting to me. Totally. So I was like, whoa, I do come in hot sometimes. I come in like yeah, I come in a hot. little like high energy, kind of wanting a lot. Like I want a lot of attention, but I also want mm-hmm. to like give and like, you know, just connect. Mm-hmm. And like that's too much at yeah. first for some people. If Justin and I were, weren't long distance when we met, mm. he probably would have like, oh my God. like honestly it helped him metabolize yeah. my energy. That's actually because the truth. it was like from a distance. So, and then we talked about too, like how long you should wait to have sex. Mm-hmm. Um, pretty basic question, but really interesting answer. Uh, we talked a lot about um, why certain patterns come up in your relationships that continue to. We talked about infidelity, so cheating, what you should do in relationships there. Um, Lindsay basically asked really personal questions. <laughs> Um, that are really obvious. <laughs> <laughs> Can't wait for everyone to hear it <laughs> and wonder. But I mean, I, I had to know. You I, guys, it's just like- I this, can only move from- John is so present and crisp and clear and open and funny. And he had an answer for everything. Mm-hmm. Um, it was just a really flowing, honest, open conversation. And I know that this is going to be like a notepad episode for you guys to like yeah. literally take notes on. And I cannot wait to talk more about it with you. And we hope you share it. Like if you have a partner or yes. whatever, like it will- Share it with your friends. Share it, it with any females in your life. Help. Yeah. Whew. I All was right. trying to explain the episode to Justin. I was I was explaining it to a friend what? today. I was like, I did a really bad job. I did. I don't know how to explain it. Like I don't. I don't know how to explain. Like it was like everything made sense, and it was like so much nodding. It's like crazy. I just was like, I'm trying to explain. It's mm. so. I need to listen. Again. listen. I do. Yeah. All right, everyone. So if you haven't joined our secret Facebook group, join, mm-hmm. find us on Facebook. Um, just search Secret Almost 30 Podcast Group. Um, if Subscribe you- to the newsletter. We have a newsletter yeah. that comes out every week with um, promo codes, what's happening, our events. Make sure you're subscribed so you can stay in the loop there. Follow us on Instagram at Almost 30 Podcast. We do a bunch of fun stories. Um, our Instagram's really fun. It's just like memes and us being fun. Basically. Yeah. Chloe. And if you want to connect with John, uh, his website is John Wineland, W I N E L A N D uh, dot com. Um, he, you know, holds workshops and events and seminars and all of that. So check that out. Enjoy this episode. Let us know what you think. Happy Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Day. This episode is brought to you by Mend. What a timely sponsor. So timely. Day before Valentine's Day. Mm -hmm. So if you have recently gone through, you know, breakup, been dumped. I think you could still have a broken heart if you'd done the breaking up, Krista. 100%. (laughs) Been both both ends of the spectrum. Yeah. Everyone needs to get dumped. (laughs) Really. We're just clamoring over here about it. It's the first time recording and I'm all over the place. But honestly, Mend is an app that helps you get through breakup. So Elle, their CEO, um, realized that there wasn't the resources that she felt she needed when she was going through a breakup. She wanted to have a coach. She wanted to see the science kind of behind what exactly was going on with your brain. Um, So she created the app and she is an amazing female founder and we are so excited to be in partnership with such an amazing product. Yeah, the trainings through the app um, are rooted in the latest research on love and relationships. Uh, They work with experts across fields to bring you a holistic training program that will teach you how to feel better, faster. I love this app so much. I've recommended it actually to a few of my girlfriends who recently went through breakups. It's funny at the beginning of a year, sometimes that happens. There's like movement and transition and people get a little antsy about, you know, their uh, resolutions and they feel like they have to like cut bait. Yeah, like dump you know, people is one of them. Dump them. Um, and it's after the holidays, you know, you're, the whole I holiday know. you're like, I can't break up with you. Yeah. I want to cuddle. So this this app is is definitely for you if that's something or maybe someone in your life that is going through it. Let's mend.com L-E-T-S-M-E-N-D dot com and you can use our code almost 30 for a free trial. Um, A-L-M-O-S-T three zero. And you know what's great about an app? It's like 
no one knows you're doing it. Mm-hmm. Not that it's like shameful. It's just kind of like, hey, if you want it to be private, it could be private. Yeah, 100%. You know, it's so nice. Yep. All right, guys, let us know what you think. Spread the word about Mend, letsmend.com. Love ya. This episode is also brought to you by Branch Basics. Guys, really excited about this yeah. one. Like truly, truly madly deeply pumped about this one. Cleaning products are crazy. Like crazy and insane that we are surrounding ourselves and rubbing chemicals all over places that our hands are, that our faces are. That our food is. That our food is. That our like, kids are like touching and shit. Honestly, like yeah. it, it really like think about the like bleach and like all of these like commercial products that we've been using for so long that are so toxic for ourselves, for the environment, for so many things and know that there's a better option and that is Branch Basics. Mm -hmm. So I am so pumped to be working with them because they are the missing link for living a healthy life. So you're eating well, you know, you guys are working out, you guys are meditating, being mindful, sleeping. Like I know you guys do so much, but also having cleaning products that are clean and organic and natural is really important. It's just gonna like, doesn't offset that work, but it's a really important part of holistic living. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, and it's so easy. So I just got my branch basics the other week and there's like a concentrate solution mm-hmm. that you add to a certain amount of water for different uses. Mm-hmm. So um, whether you're, great. yeah, whether you're washing your floors or maybe you're using it as detergent, you know, washing the dishes, whatever it is, um, it's kind of fun. I'm like a little all natural chemist, mm. but um yeah, it's just so easy. It simplifies everything. Um, Branding's the, on the, point. I was just about to say that. Branding is on freaking point. I saw the branding was like, yes. Mm-hmm. And, you know, to ensure that you have a home that is, you know, non-toxic and you don't have to worry about it affecting your hormones, like your kid's health, whatever it is, I think is worth the investment. Mm -hmm. Um, And it's not even that much. And we get you a discount, y'all. Hello. 15% off branchbasics.com. So that's B-R-A-N-C-H basics. B-A-S-I-C-S dot com. And you can get 15% using the code almost 30. I got the starter kit, which basically has all the cleaning products that you would need. Um, just helps you out from, from the beginning. But you can basically buy everything that you could want there. They have detergent. They have um, concentrate for multi-purpose reasons. They have all-purpose. They have streak-free window stuff. They have everything you need. So use our code almost 30 for 15% off at Branch Basics and enjoy and tell tell us what you think yeah tell us what you think we're excited for this one. one love you guys we jump right in we kind of go we kind of go with the flow mm-hmm. of the conversation so many of our listeners and us personally you know are approaching 30 or in our 30s which i think is a time when you know we're spiritually maturing, sexually kind of in touch with, you know, what we want, but we're not quite sure how to express it. Mm. We're dealing with men who are not in the place of being evolved um, in that way. And it's how do, yeah, how do we like navigate that terrain? Because Mm. we see so much in them and and how do we kind of break that that barrier in those Mm -hmm. like different areas, whether it's sex or intimacy or communication. Sure. So, yeah. I'm excited so, to jump in. So I love that topic because I, I work with a lot of men. Mm. Are you are we, now? Because I don't know. Because you know I'm a generation above you guys. Mm. So I'm just curious. Is it the same? It feels the same for you because women in their late 30s and 40s are saying, "I can't, you know, I can't feel him. I can't connect to him. Mm. I don't know how. He doesn't know how I'm to hold my closer. feelings. Oh yeah, that kind of I, stuff. Yeah, I think. See, I think it's interesting. I feel like. I feel like men of our generation. And we're on, by the way. Sorry, we're just like talking. So oh, okay. it's, it's on. Oh, great. Yeah. It's on, but we just kind of like <laughs> jump. Right. Right. Yeah. We've already answered you. <laughs> um, I feel like men of our generation are, I, I would be interested of what you guys think, are more in touch than I feel like my father's generation mm. and the generation above me. I feel like that generation was em- almost more emotionally stuffed mm-hmm. than our generation was. I don't know if it's like what it is, but I do feel like there is an ability to kind of communicate or it's seen as cool 
or progressive to be a good communicator or to be more open. Right. So I feel like that's more um, in my personal experience, but I don't know. What do you think? Well, do you like that? Yes. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah I feel lucky. Like, I yeah. feel lucky that... That they're able to share. Yeah, that they're yeah. able to share. Like, I think about my dad, who's an angel. You know, he's so sweet, but he never... You know, he's so sweet and he shows me he loves me, but he's never said, I love you. Mm. You know, just because it's almost like... My dad, yeah. it's, it's very Similar. interesting. Or they just show it and do you need money <laughs> or you're doing great? Right. Yeah. You know, but, you know, emotionally stunted, it's never like... Hey, how are you doing? How was mm -hmm. your day? Yeah. How are you feeling? Yeah. You know, totally. Yeah. Well, men have not been taught to lean into that, mm. right? At least, you know, especially older men have not been taught to lean into that. Mm. In fact, most guys kind of avoid that like the plague. Like, how are you doing? Especially if it's a difficult mm -hmm. time. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like if you're in an emotion that they don't want to deal with. Right. So, mm -hmm. so training men's nervous systems to be able to lean in is a big piece of the work that I do. Mm. And, um, you know, I, I, I posted about this the other day because I think one of my pet peeves is that men's work has been very good at teaching men how to express how they feel, but it doesn't necessarily teach them how to hold the emotions of others. So there's been this kind of, especially women, right? So there's been this kind of belief that, you know, the last 40 years guys have been, you know, getting in touch with their feelings and going out and doing drum circles. And I love that, you know, I'm, I'm part of that. But it doesn't, it's not, that's not necessarily the masculine in terms of being able to hold something, mm. right? If you're, if you're expressing something, it's not necessarily the same thing as being able to hold something. And so I see a lot of guys who are younger come into the work that I do and they're super aware, super able to communicate, but they're not able to hold. And that's a different mm. training. So this is, I don't know if you guys experienced this, but being able to hold your emotion or hold space for you is just a different skill set than being able to express my emotions. Yes. And, um, you know, there's implications sexually, there's all kinds of stuff that comes from that. But that, that's, I think, as, as guys are starting to define masculinity, like what is masculinity? I think it's clear that we differentiate those things, right? So the guys can know like, okay, great. Me expressing my emotion, that's that's one piece of it. But training my nervous system to hold her emotions, mm. that's a whole other musculature, mm -hmm. you know? How do you connect that emotional with the physical? Like when you say it's a nervous system training, like mm -hmm. how is, because that's interesting. I've actually never heard that. Like how would you connect those? You know, how do you connect those? Well, I think I, I, think I get what you're asking, but- yeah. um, you know, direct me if, if I'm yeah. not answering it the way you want. But I think that for, for so, you know, I, I come from this framework of looking at the masculine and the feminine and everything, right? Like mm -hmm. we all have a masculine, we all have a feminine. It, that gender is not really that important, mm -hmm. especially my daughter's 20. So especially for, you know, that generation, they're so fluid, you know, they're so fluid. But we all have a masculine, we all have a feminine. And the masculine in all of us is the thing that never changes, Right there's a there's a part of you that's you now. It was you when you were five. It's you when you die, right? And that that witness, you know, if you're an Eckhart Tolle fan, like the witness, that's our masculine. But everything that's changing, right? All of our emotions, the world, the feelings going through our body, all that is the feminine. And so the more somebody's identified with everything that's changing or the flow, the more that they're feminine in nature and the more someone's like wanting more stillness and peace and nothingness, the more they're masculine. And so training our own nervous systems, like the way that I work with men is I try to teach them to train, to work with their own nervous systems so that they can hold their own feminine, right? Their own emotions, their own thoughts. And then once they get good at that, then they can move on to holding a room or holding a lover, or holding... So there's a yoga to it, right? There's breath, there's a structure, there's a certain, like if I'm collapsed, like my capacity to hold your emotion is definitely impacted. But if I'm the, the front of my body's open and soft and my spine is strong and I'm breathing and then you feel safe to bring me whatever's going on in your world. It, does, it could be a child, right? It could be, you know, woman, any, anybody, be another man, anybody who's emoting. So physically, you know, there's a, there's a posture, I guess I would say, to masculine practice. There's a presence. You know, presence is a new commodity. 
And teaching men to be present is part of the, I think that's what you're asking, part of, you know, like that's the physicality of being able to. And then if I'm present and my body's open and relaxed and then I'm emoting, right, it's, it's, it creates, it's probably attractive, right? Or at least it's inviting versus if I'm, my body's collapsed and I've collapsed and I'm emoting, then there's no, nothing for my partner to connect to. So, yeah, so the physicality of it is really about holding structure, I guess, would be the way that I would put it. And that's yogic. And it's, you know, meditative and there's a nervous system training to that because a lot of guys just don't have that capacity. You know? It's interesting to think about like kind of the other way around. Like, so when would or when have you seen, you know, the woman having to tap into her masculine and be still and present and grounded? Right. You know, how does that how do you incorporate that into like this exploration of like yeah. balancing and having both energies inside of you? I yeah. think if you tell a man like, well, that's your feminine energy, he's like, what? Yeah, you know, right, right. so yeah, how 100%. do you navigate that? But you can feel it though. Yeah. Really. Like, oh, you know, you, yeah. know you, can, you can be like, well, this is attractive and I want to lean into this and this totally. is not attractive and I'm kind of like, I don't know what to do with this. Um, and that's a great question because I work with a lot of women and I'm actually, I'm, I'm, I have a women's group that I'm running and this is a big piece. Like what's mm. my sacred masculine? You know, what's my healthy masculine? And for mothers specifically, you know, there's nothing more feminine, at least in the way that I'm describing it as children. Mm-hmm. I mean, just mm. all emotion, all expression, mm. like especially under 10, you know. And in their toxic masculine, their response is kind of stop it or my way or the highway, or do what I say, right? That's kind of the toxic masculine that we've learned, which is, um, you know, which has been kind of cultural for a while, right? A healthy masculine creates a container, creates a structure to hold the emotions of a child or whatever, or your man, right? You know what I mean? Like if, if he's like in a deep depression or in a funk or just highly emotional, your capacity to hold a container for him is actually really... It's your masculine giving his feminine space to feel. And then, but in a sacred masculine, as I would call it, it's about liberating his heart or their heart. So for children, what I work with mothers a lot on is is how do you like, how would you like a masculine presence to treat you when you're highly emotive, like almost uncontrolled, like a kid's tantrum, right? Would you tell them to shut up? Would you, you know, sit there and hold space for them and let them, you know, just emote? Or would you, like, do something that liberates their heart? And so it could be something like, you know, picking them up and tickling them. It could be like, you know, like playing with them. And and so what a place where a lot of women are using this technology, I guess you'd call it, is how to be a masculine presence for the child right? How to, how to liberate love, right? That's the masculine gift is to liberate mm. something that's... Because they feel like they have to be the one that tells them what to do and set that standard so yeah. that it's more like grounded and present rather than do this, do that. Okay. Well, it's also more like making it okay I mean, the feminine in all of us wants to express. Right. My fem- I have a very strong feminine. Like, I want to mm-hmm. be able to express without being wrong. Mm-hmm. So a child, if you think about yeah. a child, a child wants to be able to express. And is if, if there's pain, right, if I'm uh, making that pain, if I'm loving that pain, right, there's one thing to hold space for it. And there's another thing to make it wrong. But the highest act would be to love it, right? Play with it, you know, like... I say like, you know, throw them over your shoulder and play with them and, until they giggle. And then you've liberated them from whatever pain that they're in. So it's like um, my teacher, one of my, one of my teachers gives this example of if, um, if your partner's complaining, if you're a man and your partner's complaining to you, like you could get defensive, right, which is what most guys do. Or you could spin her around and pull her towards you and tell her it's, sexy when she complains, right? And one is going to evoke 
a response that's kind of like a liberation and one is going to evoke something else. So, so training guys. That's how I like to be. Like when I'm doing something, I like when Justin, like Justin's my boyfriend, like kind of makes fun of me or like Mm -hmm. just like makes it a joke. Yeah. You know, because I whatever I'm saying or complaining about is nothing. You know, right. if it was something serious, it would be taken seriously, and I would make sure of that. But right, right. Um, I like that response. Like I normally, if I say something that it's kind of like, you know, I like when when someone makes fun of me or just like makes light of the situation because it brings right. me back to presence of like, oh yeah, it's not a big deal. Right. And and then it just lets it go. You know, you let it go. You're like, okay. But right. if they say something negative back, then you're kind of in that cycle. Yeah, yeah. Or if they get defensive, mm-hmm. right? Which is you know kind of the standard guy thing, which is, but I do all this. Mm-hmm. I look at all the stuff I do do. And you're complaining about the one thing I don't. And so that's how guys typically experience it, which doesn't create connections. So, you know, training their nervous systems to be open to new possibilities to make play, mm-hmm. you know, from it or to, and usually the body has something to do with it, right? Whenever anybody's in a bad mood, I mean, the general feminine bad mood is there's not enough love. Mm-hmm. The general masculine bad mood is I'm burdened. Mm. Yeah, like she yeah. wants too much. She's nagging. Yeah. I've got, there's too much. I've, yeah. you, know, don't, you know, stop it. I've got too much shit to do, you know. Um, so, so liberating somebody from a closed heart is a, um, is a beautiful gift. It's not just a masculine one, but that's kind of the, if you're going to think about the sacred masculine, it's, that's how I would describe it. Mm-hmm. How do you, what do you tell relationships like that? So, you know, they come in and the man feels, you know, as if she's asking too much, she's nagging, I do so much, I provide for the family, you know, X, Y, and Z. And then she feels like she's not seen or she's not receiving enough love. Like, what are some things that you suggest to people like that? Yeah, that's kind of the common, that's kind of yeah, the that's thing. I, yeah, mm-hmm. that's, that's the big one. Um, I felt like that was like my family. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> my no, I mean, yeah. <laughs> look, 100%. first of all, I relate to him because I've been mm-hmm. there, right? Um, and I think both... You know, what the masculine wants is to be appreciated, right? And be appreciated and trusted. Like, I trust you, I'll follow you anywhere is like catnip for any masculine being, any man. And um, what the feminine wants is to be seen, right? Like, you're so beautiful, right? And what, even if you're crying and raging at me, it's beautiful. Right? And so training men to feel beyond the complaint into what's really going on in her heart is... I think that the the key to shifting that, like, so it's not just a complaint, like there's a desire in her heart, her heart wants more love or her heart wants to be seen or her heart wants to be felt. And so you could, you could hang out here on the surface of the complaint and like try to deal with the content or you could, you know, dive into, you know, what's really going on, which is that she's probably not always, but 90% of the time, just not feeling loved or seen or felt and, and go for that, you know, develop the skill set to, you know, play with that, open that. You have to be Fuck really that. committed. I mean, you know, yeah. you, a, yeah, I think there's a willingness from both, both parties. Yeah. It's like, I, I think half the battle is like getting there to want to, mm-hmm. you know, communicate in that way. Mm-hmm. I think, I don't know, I'm just speaking from my own experience, mm-hmm. like with our like parents' generation, it's mm-hmm. usually like, one of them wants to work on it and then the other's like, well, you just need to fix what you're doing and then everything will be fine. Right, right. How do you like deal with that ego? Can you help is our parents' ego? marriages? <laughs> right. <laughs> right. That's actually uh, what this is about. Yeah, yeah well, so like, I'm, I'm curious if that's still, if that happens with you guys. Like, yeah. Does that happen? Uh, where what, you're is, like, what was the thing? Are both people willing oh, like, to work on it? like you need to work on it. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I haven't experienced that in a while. I haven't I been used in a relationship in a while. I used but. to do that in a relationship. Yeah. Before like that was just, like, if he just yes. did X, that yeah, would be enough. It'd be love. Fine. Yep, it would yeah, be like yeah, you. Yeah. It would always be like me. It it was kind of fucked up. Yeah. It's like my power play. I would just like power play it, and like no matter what, I was always right, and no matter what, I would always be. I was like, we're great communicators because he would always just concede to whatever I would say, mm-hmm. and you know, I'm like pretty good with my words in situations like that. So I was just like manipulative enough to like make him always feel wrong you know, about stuff, which is like kind of sad. But yeah, I was just always like, you need to fix whatever. Well, but then after a while, you won't respect him. A hundred percent. That's yeah, why we're yeah. not together. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's like, yeah. which is, you know, the poor thing. It's yeah. like. Yeah. Well, look, I mean, it's kind of like, you know, the, the feminine, again, the feminine, all of us is not gender-based. 
But the feminine in all of us wants the tussle. Mm. The masculine wants everything to come to a nice, tidy end. Why, why is that? It's just the nature of... It's crazy. You know, because, well, I mean, I don't want to get too esoteric on your audience here, but, you know... Okay, the, <laughs> okay so <laughs> the masculine in me, I would rather be out on a beach by myself or up in the mountains by myself or... Um, you know, meditating or just kind of feeling the, the void, mm-hmm. right? Most men settle for the void of television or beer or something else that's kind of this faux nothingness. So the masculine in all of us wants, and masculine you guys probably wants nothingness. They're free. Like I'll, the masculine myth is I'll be free when, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, I'll be free when I make enough money. I'll be free when she stops oh, complaining. That's such a good one. I'll yeah, be free. Crazy. Yeah, I'll be free when. Mm. The feminine myth mm. is there'll be enough love when. Mm. There'll be enough love when, you know, he or she appreciates me. There'll be enough love when I find the right one. Mm. There'll be enough love when I change this, uh, you know. Mm. And all, both of these things are myths because there's never enough freedom for the masculine in us. And there's never enough love for the feminine in us. I mean… I'm sure you've had the experience of having a blissful moment or like a totally, you felt totally loved and seen, but you know, the next day you're like, okay, where's more, Mm -hmm. right? Well, that's how men feel about freedom. They'll get a big goal, right? Or they'll have a certain level of some success. They'll write their book, they'll do whatever, and they'll celebrate it for five or 10 minutes. And then they'll be like, okay, what's next? So, you know, masculine is always looking for freedom and completion in the masculine nervous system is kind of a sense of freedom. Like we, we've resolved that, haven't we? Now I'm, we've resolved that argument, yeah? Mm. Um, so now mm. I'm free, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. and the feminine in all of us wants to tussle. Mm. Like, no, 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 like, like there's more, more. love. Yeah, a little there's more, more. Like, yeah. Even if the tussle is a fight sometimes, right? So, mm. you know, so I, the, the, the key, I think, to good relationship is, is celebrating those differences versus trying to make us more like the other. You know, if I know, you know, so, you know, my girlfriend's, you know, very successful, powerful woman. And, um, but she wants to tussle. And the moment I make that tussle right, like I'm like, you're adorable when you complain to me like that, or, or, you know what I mean? Or something, you know, and she's, I make that and I start tussling with her. She's happy because we're tussling. Right. And the moment that she blesses my, you know, surf trip by myself, you know, I feel happy because, you know what I mean? She's celebrating the fact that I, I need time on my own. So if we can celebrate those differences versus make them wrong or try to change them, which I think is what a lot of people do, then, then we're just in a much better space. Why do, why do we deem them wrong? Because it's not us? Yeah, because it's not us. You yeah. know, Alison Armstrong talks about, you know, women thinking that men are hairy women. Right. I mean, it's kind of a crude example, but, <laughs> but she's, you know, she's got a point. And men yeah. actually think that, you know, women are, you know, smooth, soft men. Mm-hmm. Right. And it's not like, why can't she be more responsible? Why can't she honor her word? Mm-hmm. Why does she change her mind? Like, if she's feminine in nature, you know, just like when I'm in my feminine or anybody's in their feminine, then we're with the flow. Like, what's true this moment might not be true this moment. And, if I'm thinking from my masculine, I'm like, but you said X, Y, and Z. Can't change your mind now, right? So guys are constantly trying to make their women more, have more integrity, be more in their word, um, be more responsible. And it's kind of a way of masculinizing them versus mm-hmm. celebrating the fact that that's not their nature. You know? Does that make sense? Yeah, 100%. Yeah. Yeah. So are people, when they're born, are they born, is it like genetic to be in a certain amount of mass? I know this is like making it, but is it, when you're born, are you born a certain amount of ma- masculine or feminine or is it like nature n- or nurture? And and does it change as you get older? Well, yeah, I mean, there's a hormonal piece, mm-hmm. right? There's testosterone versus estrogen, right? Mm-hmm. You know, and when, when men, <clears throat> actually Luke taught me this, he got it from John Gray, but it's really true. When men get angry, their body produces estrogen. So they're literally, as they're getting more and more fired up, they're literally, right, right, you know, they're literally getting more feminized by their hormones. It's not testosterone? No. Wow. Estrogen. Yeah. We think it's testosterone, but it's not. Yeah. You know, the, I think, I mean, it's, it's hard to measure, but the statistics I've heard are 90% of men, give or take, are born with a masculine essence, meaning 
sexually, relationally, they'd like to lead. Mm. And they'd like to, you know, they, they want to, I guess a good way to, the way that I always kind of get people to feel this is like, would you rather, you know, penetrate her with, you know, penetrate her open heart and body with presence and consciousness? Or would you rather her penetrate you and lead you somewhere relationally or sexually? Most guys are like, no, 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 I want to be, right? And most women, most, not all, are, no, no, I want to, like, I want to surrender to somebody I trust, right? Does that mm. feel true to you guys? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's how you can tell whether your essence, at least sexually or relationally, is masculine or feminine. And, you know, most women now are much better at the cultural masculine than men. I mean, women under 30 are making more money than men under 30. This is going to change. I mean, this is changing. You know, you guys don't need us for, you don't need us to have children anymore. You don't, re, you don't need us to make money. You don't need mm. us to protect you, right? All the things a hundred years ago you needed a man for, you don't. So, but there is some place in your heart that you can't lead yourself and that's masculine value. Like there is something mm. that you can't give to yourself that is the gift of a man to a woman or a masculine partner to a feminine partner. And um, I think guys are coming in, coming to grips with that. Like, it's not enough for me to just make money and be a good dad. She's mm -hmm. still not happy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Why? You know, the myth of the good husband. And it's because women intuit that they don't really need men the way they used to. And, and they intuit that there's some place that they want to be led Mm. Um, I took a little sidetrack there, but I, mm -hmm. I think I think you know that's a big piece of what I see in relationship. Mm -hmm. yeah. Wow! We interrupt this episode to bring you a word from our sponsor, Four Sigmatic. Almost thirty nation has spoken. They love Four Sigmatic. Kristen and I are huge fans. I honestly feel like a different person. And I'm not just saying that because this is an ad. Um, I am so thankful because I was feeling anxious and crashing midway through my day because I was drinking too much coffee. I And I was dependent on it for all the wrong reasons and not that coffee is bad. But for me, it just did not sit well in terms of like my... Uh, exercise routine, when I needed to be focused throughout my day. So Four Sigmatic uh, has changed that. I am drinking the lion's mane when I need to get focused and grounded. I am taking cordyceps, drinking cordyceps before my workout. Uh, reishi is so nice before bed. Like, damn, it's a little chocolate milk kind of thing. If you mix it with nut milk, okay. But at Four Sigmatic, they believe in real magic, in the real magic of functional mushrooms like reishi, chaga, cordyceps, and lion's mane. And they mix it with other superfoods and adaptogens um, to help people live healthier and more enhanced lives. And it's true. I truly feel feel the difference. They also have elixirs, coffees, um, where they mix mushroom, mushrooms and coffee, as well as superfood blends. And they come in single serve packets, packets, which I love. So you don't have to worry about portions. It's already portioned out. It's so convenient to carry with you wherever you go. And you can blend it with hot water and nut milk or just hot water, mix it in shakes and smoothies. Um, you can get really creative. We love Four Sigmatic so much. Uh, you can go to Four Sigmatic F O U R S I G M A T I C dot com slash almost 30, and you will get 15% off your first order. So, for sigmatic dot com slash almost 30, and at checkout, you will see you have a 15% discount. Stock up, trust me, this is one of the best gifts you can give someone. I give it to everyone um, around the holiday time. People are still talking to me about it. I get it, you'll love it. And also, we have an exciting announcement. We have a Four Sigmatic giveaway going on right now this week. So stay tuned on our social media. We'll, we will be uh, telling you all the terms, but here we will tell you that you can subscribe to our newsletter or subscribe to our YouTube page or subscribe on iTunes to our podcast and write a review. All of those get you entered into this giveaway, which is a bundle of Four Sigmatic products. Uh, you don't want to miss this one. You know, investing in your, in your health sometimes is not, not the cheapest, but hey, we pay now so we don't have to pay later. It's so true. So let us know how you're liking the Four Sigmatic products that you've gotten and we will 
happily answer any questions that you have or pass them on to our friends at Four Sigmatic. We love you guys and please enter the giveaway. This episode is also brought to you by Hum Nutrition. Humnutrition.com is where Krista and I go for our supplements and vitamins. As you guys know, Hum Nutrition has been with us since the beginning of Almost 30 Time, and we are so grateful to them. They are a brand that we stand behind 100%. Uh, It's so easy. You can go to humnutrition.com, take a short quiz, and a leading nutritionist will recommend three to five supplements or vitamins um, to kind of get you started to... um, you know, fill specifically your needs, um, whether you're not sleeping, perhaps you want to see improvement in your skin, in your hair, your nails. Uh, maybe you're having digestive issues. Uh, maybe you are trying to combat um, symptoms of, you know, having your period, having cramps, whatever it is. It can be tailored specifically to you, which is amazing. So go to humnutrition.com. You can use our code almost 30 nation, A L. M O S T three zero N A T I O N for fifteen percent off your order. The group, our secret Facebook group, is popping off about what's been working for them when it comes to hum nutrition products. We love them so much. Um, so let us know what you're taking. Uh, my favorite right now is the gut instinct. Just trying to get my gut on point because gut health affects brain health and so much more. So I'm really paying attention to that these days. Um, we love you guys and use our code almost 30 nation, 15% off. I wanted to ask because a lot of our listeners lately have been asking us, um, a lot of them are like stepping out of long-term relationships, ironically, mm-hmm. just like a, a ton of them. Mm-hmm. And they're like, jumping out onto the dating scene now and, you know, I'm navigating this and I'm coming from a long-term relationship where, you know, we had done so much work and we're, you know, totally comfortable with each other and expressing this and opening our hearts and all that. Mm. So when you step into kind of this new territory of getting to know someone in the beginning, like how soon do you open your heart? Like, and and once you feel like kind of the energy of them being like, like what's what's going on? You know, mm-hmm. the typical like this is too much too soon mm-hmm. or whoa, I don't know what this is. You know, it's like all this gray area that we have to navigate even at at this age still. Like right. I definitely did in my early 20s, but even now in my 30s, I'm like, what is, like, what is this? In your early 20s too, it's like you you were drunk and you'd be like, <laughs> totally. you know, you'd always like tell, you'd be yeah. like, wait till you're drunk and then you're like, I love you. And <laughs> yeah. you're like, I love you. And you're like, do you remember what you said last night? And then you're like, and I love like, you. And he's like, you want to fuck? And you're like, okay. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> Literally, you like were like, get drunk, say I love you and have sex for the first time. Like what? <laughs> but now I think as you're older, it's kind of like you're like, more aware. You're like, 100%. I think we might be sober when we like say I love you. Totally. <gasps> right. Totally. Yeah. Good question. So you're 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 curious as to how and when you should open your heart. Yeah, you? I mean mm-hmm. I know there's or not about a the formula. Process too. It's yeah. just like when you meet that superficial resistance, because right. like I think they probably want to feel that yeah. eventually, but they're yeah. like, oh it's too soon. Like if I tell my guys like I'm already like opening up uh-huh. about sorry I'm it's not a that's, good impression of a guy. That's her guy. That's, that's, that's you man yeah. yeah, okay. Not we love men, obviously. <laughs> no, we do. But but I really want to know, like, is it too much too soon? And, you know, am I, am I, can I do a better job at doing a little bit of the dance that would kind right. of attract them in in a healthy way? I'm not saying, like, play the, a game. It's just more like, how do I dance better? Right. Mm-hmm. How can I be authentic good doing one. it, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. Well, I think a good way to do it is to just, um, so if we get really good at paying attention to each other, right, we can notice if something is opening or closing the other, right? So Mm -hmm. not necessarily with saying I love you, but just with energy, right? I love you or an open heart, it's just a kind of energy. Well, again, the masculine is not at home in energy. The masculine wants, wants... Mm -hmm. Or his natural, it's not that he wants, but his natural inclination is less. And y'all are a lot of something, right? The masculine wants nothing in his heart. Um, and I'm assuming that these are kind of, these guys are kind of masculine guys. So modulating, right? So the perfect example is, let's say you're really excited to see him. You're on a date, the second, third date, and you're really excited to see him. Well, 
giggling or giving a little smile and then noticing like, wow, does that, does he contract or does he smile back and take a deep breath? Mm -hmm. Like literally like watch his body. Did, did me giggling and smiling at him or running into his arms open him or did it close him? And if it opened him, that means he's ready for more. And, um, and if it closed him, that means, okay, well, maybe he's just not quite ready for how much love I have, right? Because, you know, at, at, at essence, the feminine is love. At essence, the masculine is consciousness. And again, this is for all of us, right? So if we want to give love, like we naturally want to give love if we're in our feminine, but if that, the other is not quite ready for whatever reason, had a hard day or a little nervous about commitment or all of those things, you check it out. Like try, try something, like try even broaching it. Like, like even, you know, talking about how you feel when you're around him and see, does he tighten? Does his breath get shorter? Do his, you know, do his shoulders, does he, does know, he get turn a boner? Away? Does he get a boner? <laughs> that's a good way to see if you That's should. a good way to that's see. A sure that's sign. That's my tracker. Just, I mean, I guess if you could check for that in the <laughs> restaurant. But let me see. Like, I'm really digging you right now. And then you check and see <laughs> if he got hard. No, but literally. that's one approach. Yeah, but... You could probably you could probably see if he if he takes a breath. Yeah. Like, what do you mean? Like, he's like, oh well, I, yeah. Well, I think we'll, so. You hold your breath when you're kind of yeah. When you so tense, true. Mm. yeah. When you tense, yeah. Yeah, yeah it is. It's kind what of like, if what yeah. if they're what what about like joking and deflecting and kind of coming at you at like a with like a yeah. rugrats flirting where they're like Damn. making fun of you. Right. <laughs> Sorry, am I well, speaking for some myself? Of that, some of that rugrats flirting, <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. Well, you know, again, it's I'd have to see the. Dude. It's kind of like when I, they make fun of you. They're like. Most flirting of, like that. Well, see, most of the time, if you do something like that mm -hmm. and he, you know, calls you a dork or flirt, mm -hmm. whatever mm -hmm. the rugrats flirting mm -hmm. is, <laughs> I'd take that as a sign of of opening, yeah. mm -hmm. right? He's not, he's playing. Now mm -hmm. he's tussling. Mm -hmm. That's what I was like, tussling. Right. Yeah, 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 tussling, man. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to use that word yeah. so Love much. That. This is yeah. tussling, yeah. <laughs> that actually comes from from my teacher, but but tussling that. is such a great way to describe it because yeah. that's what, you know, that's what love is. It's a tussle. At least when it's sexy, it's mm -hmm. a tussle, mm -hmm. right? And so, you know, you could think of this if you're in a relationship, for those of your listeners who are, if he's working, like let's say he's writing, he's on his computer, he's mm -hmm. doing some work, right? <laughs> and he's single-mindedly focused and you come in and you're just like, honey, <laughs> right? And mm -hmm. he's like, oh, shit. Like, you know, <laughs> Literally, um, like bitch is bad. Yeah, oh. <laughs> you might just, you know, you might modulate it. And so you come in, you know, with a cup of tea and you bring mm -hmm. a cup of tea and set it down to him and see if, if it, if he relaxes and if he relaxes, mm -hmm. then maybe you can kiss him on the back of the neck and then see what happens. Then he tenses and you're like, okay, that's about all he can handle right now. Mm -hmm. But it requires us to be generous and not have them, you know, respond on demand, right? It requires like, so the great feminine gift to the masculine because we, we kind of, you know, life is, to the masculine and all of us, the life is a fucking burden. Like, there's just so much to do and I've just got to like do this and do that and do this and do that. So your gift to us is your energy. Like the flow of energy through your body, whether it's sexy energy or playful energy or sunlight energy or whatever it is that's coming through you, that's a gift. And if you're thinking like, okay, how am I going to gift this hardworking, assuming he's a good guy, right? How am I going to gift this hardworking, good man with energy that he can metabolize? Like you wouldn't, you know, when you're feeding him grapes, you feed him one or two grapes at a time and let him savor the grape. You don't like shove a whole bunch of grapes down his throat and, and, and then go, and then go, an asshole, how do you take my grapes, right? You, you, you kind of, you know, you tease him and you give mm. him a little bit and you see yeah. if he's like, if he opens his mouth wider, maybe he wants three grapes, mm -hmm. you know? And having that, I think for women, especially having that sense of generosity, like, okay, I'm going to, assuming I'm with a good guy, I'm going to, you know, just trust that he's going to open slowly, right? I mean, he's going to open slowly. And I think a lot of women um, that I work with, um, don't, they'll just blast, especially if they're doing work, like if they're doing work to open their bodies and they're getting in touch with their, you know, yearning hearts and they're like, they're in it and they feel it and they're like, okay, I'm going to bring this home 
and just blast this dude. And his <laughs> yeah. nervous system shuts down. Yeah. Like, unless he's trained to circulate energy, sexual energy, unless he's trained to circulate energy, it's like, a, it's like an electrical system where the circuit breaker will go off. So you'll blow his circuits. So I think, you know, to get to your question, when you come in too fast and he pulls away, it might not be that he's not interested. It might just be that you blew his circuits, mm. right? And then you think, oh shit, he's not interested. And so and then you withhold your heart and then he feels kind of weird, mm. right? And so, you know, oftentimes if men are asking you out on more than one date, you know, they're interested, right? And, and it's just a matter of they're intuiting, you know, the masculine is always, you know, surveying resources. Like how much energy am I going to yeah. need to hold yeah. this woman? And if at some point something feels like, oh shit, this is going to be a little too much energy, um, then they'll shut down. And then they'll say you're crazy. <laughs> something like that. Or they'll yeah. say you're too much. Yeah. Too much. And it's just, wow. it, it's it's a combination. It, it's, it's literally instinctual. They'll yeah. be like, I can't kill the tiger if I've got to deal with this. Mm. Yeah, wow. If I've got to yeah. deal with this, right? I can't, I can't like, like I, I, one of my clients is an actor and, yeah, you know, he's pretty well known and he's on set a lot, right? And so his girlfriend's like all over him on set. And he's like, I can't, I can't like manage that and kill the tiger, you know? So, so they broke up and it was mainly because she just didn't feel into him and feel how much of her energy, whether it's, I mean, text is a great way to share energy. She, she couldn't feel it. So she just gave him too much, but he was into her. And he just, at some point, you know, if a guy's on purpose which, you know, I'm sure you're probably wanting guys who are on purpose. If they're on purpose, then they're not thinking about relationship most of the time. They need to be kind of like mm. drawn into it. Mm. You know, like, what do you mean by that? Yeah, what's on purpose? Doing something in the world that they're fully committed oh, to. Oh, okay. It's mm-hmm. hard for them to like change their direction. Yeah, the masculine yeah, is single-mindedly that. focused. Like, this is, like I had to kill the tiger, otherwise my family, and this, you know, yeah. for... for 70,000 years, yeah. that's the way that the masculine brain was trained. Like, if I don't kill the tiger, then there's not yeah. going to be any food. So the equivalent of killing the tiger is I've got to, you know, make my money or I've got to, um, you know, write my book or I've got to, you know, do this. I've got to nail this part, mm-hmm. um, whatever it is. I mean, you guys kind of yeah. know what I mean. Like, yeah, you see guys like that, you see guys like that, right? Well, women are much better at multitasking. They can mm-hmm. be like, I'm going to kill the tiger and I want love, mm-hmm. right? So the modern woman has a multitasking capacity that the modern man does not have. I mean, even though he's a little more evolved, I mean, mm-hmm. but he's got 40 years of working on yeah. this. The feminine has, you know, 60, 70,000. Yeah. So, so they're not evolved enough yet to kind of multitask that way, to be agile enough to go from, okay, I'm writing my book and then... <laughs> Yeah. Right? And then, totally. okay, baby, I'm, I'm writing my book again, right? They, they yeah. just aren't agile enough to do that. So. I've always said that, guys. It's like, as soon as they're ready, they're ready. They're like, okay, changing directions. I want to get married. <laughs> and then they like get married two years later. It's like very crazy. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't know if they, I've always felt that with friends. I'm like, wait till his friends get married. And then his old friends get married. He's like, oh yeah, everyone's getting married. We should I'm get ready. married. I'm ready. Yeah, yeah, like I'm yeah. in. Yeah. Yeah. It's time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Well, if guys think, I mean, there's a stage that I think is important. And this is, again, I'll credit Alison Armstrong. If I don't know if you guys know her, but she's, mm. she's groovy. If men are in a stage that she calls young prince, mm-hmm. right? And in young prince or mid prince, there's young prince, mid prince, you know, elder prince, something like that. Do they become king? Eventually. Cool. But that's, so a king knows what he wants. Mm. A king is totally clear, like, He's made his money, he has his kingdom, and he's just kind of, this is, I'm clear what I want. Uh, most guys in their 30s are young prince, meaning they're, they're focused as hell on building their kingdom. And m- most women that they're with see that as a lack of love and then complain about it, which then makes the young prince go, fuck, if, I, you know, if I've got to be with her and she's complaining and I'm doing my best, I look, can't she see what I'm doing? They'll be, wow, okay, like I can't, I, let me find a woman who's, you know, the, the problem lots of guys have, the next one will be different. Um, but if a man's in this young prince stage, he doesn't, he's not into relationships secondary to him. Building his kingdom is first and foremost. And um, whereas for most modern women, they're, they're interested in both. I mean, if they're healthy, they're like, okay, I want love and I want to build my kingdom. Mm-hmm. 
And, and men have not caught up with that. Mm. Does that jive with what you guys oh, see? Oh, yeah. Yeah. hundred yeah. percent. How much do you, like in that process of, you know, getting to know someone, kind of surrender your, I don't know if beliefs is the right word, not beliefs, like your um, non-negotiables almost, what you think oh, yeah. are your non-negotiables. Mm-hmm. Totally. Mm-hmm. How so much do you compromise? How, thank you. How much do you compromise like, um, and if you have some emotional baggage you're bringing in, whether you were in a relationship before mm-hmm. or you had this traumatic experience mm-hmm. or you've been single your whole life, like- mm-hmm. Or you like having sex with goats? <laughs> like when do you tell them? <laughs> I'd hold that one. Okay, okay, okay. I'd, I'd wait until the you know I'd wait until after the honeymoon. Like, this is my pet goat. Until you're like, I'm like hey, didn't I tell you, you I love goats? We're yeah. going to that island that only has goats. <laughs> yeah. and he's like cool, and yeah. then you get there. There's like a goat in an underwear. Right. Um, okay, so I'm compromise. sorry. What was your sorry. question? Yeah. Okay, so compromising. I got all caught up on compromising the goat and surrendering. Like, yeah. what? What is that? Because I think that's like a problem with like ladies. A lot of oftentimes they're dating and they're like, they're like, I'm too picky. So it's like, how how much do they compromise what they believe they want or need mm. to like see if it'll evolve and grow? Mm. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Yes. Right. So I think to answer that question, we have to look at why we choose people. Mm. And. What they've proven now is that we choose people because of our childhood programming. Mm. We just do. You know, we're fucked. Like, so we choose our dads or is it more like- What we choose is we choose somebody who's going to give us a similar experience that we had when we were young. Could be Mm. from our mom, could be from our dad. But think the thing that you never got when you were young. Mm -hmm. You're going to choose somebody who won't give you that. Got it. And then you get to play it out again. Mm. Um, or if they wouldn't naturally give you that, this is what I did with my wife, um, is I, you, we, will, we will literally cajole them into the space where they're doing the thing, right? You know, we'll make them do the thing. And, can you give an example of that? Or can you expand upon the example? Yeah. Um, so, so, you know, in my childhood, I, I was raised with a single mother, okay. right? Mm. So the experience of my youth was lack of availability. Like she's just not around because okay. she had to work. I don't know that as a seven-year-old or an mm-hmm. eight-year-old, right? She's just kind of withdrawn mm-hmm. and tired, right? Mm-hmm. And so I'm, I marry, in my early 30s, I marry a woman who loves the shit out of me, right? And just wants to, right? And, and because I'm totally unconscious to this dynamic, I literally neglect her so much that she becomes unavailable and ends up actually having an affair, and it wasn't until I started to do the work on myself that I saw how I literally, I mean, she didn't want to do that. Like I'd literally like pushed her into that space and made her unavailable or made her withdrawn. So this is kind of what we do in relationship. So when we like fall in love, more often than not, what we're falling in love with is the imprint that our body recognizes as home. Right? So... So even our soulmates are actually like little demons in disguise. And um, because we're, we're, we're going to, they either have that capacity or we're seeing, we already know, our unconscious mind already knows how we're going to maneuver this. And they've been studying this for about 50 years. And so they've, they've gotten it pretty down. Imago therapy is kind of a great way, you know, for your listeners, getting the love you want describes this really well. And, um, and so if we think about that, then then sometimes who we choose for ourselves isn't the best person. So, you know, uh, my teacher used to say, if you're a woman, go to your girlfriends. Is this guy a good guy? Is this guy the right guy for me? And it might not be the guy that you would like fall head over heels for, but they can feel what you need probably more truly than you can, and they'll choose for you. Now, if you're still unconscious about this dynamic, you'll go ahead and make that guy do the thing. Same thing with men. Like, you know, I brought, at the time, I brought my girlfriend to, I was in a men's group and I brought my girlfriend to, oh, this was six years ago. I brought my girlfriend and I asked all of them, like, okay, like, am I, am I choosing properly? And, and I had to wait for them to all give me the affirmative. I probably would have gone in all, all in anyway. Mm-hmm. And I think we do that anyway. And there's nothing wrong with that as long as we're conscious. Most of the time we're unconscious that we're kind of playing this dynamic out and then we get screwed 
but when we're conscious, then we can like make art out of it. We can heal each other. We can like, we can actually heal the wound that we're bringing with us. So consciousness is the, is the first piece. So when you talk about surrendering your terms as a woman, I don't think any woman should stuff feelings. So the whole, or man either, but, but it just depends on the moment. But if you want to be the feminine in a relationship, your commitment, if that's what you want, and you want him to be the masculine, is to be authentically emoting consistently. So let's say the great example of this is, let's say you're out to dinner and he like looks at a waitress's ass. Mm-hmm. I'm out. Yeah, yeah. I'm out. Yeah. Place is on fire. Yeah. So, so great. So that's great. I'm peeling away. So, so you could, you could, um, or he maybe just glances at it or something and you could stuff it. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, two hours later, just tear his head off. You could like hiss at him, mm-hmm. like right there in the moment, just hiss at him or smack him in the arm or, mm-hmm. or emote, like literally feel the feeling and do something right mm-hmm. away. So the primary emotion for the feminine is crucial. So if he's doing something like he's not present or he's not uh, attentive or something, you should definitely emote that. Um, the fewer words, the better. Mm-hmm. But if you don't emote that, then it then and you chew on it for more than ten seconds, it then commingles with the all of the men who didn't do that or where your parents didn't do that. And now it becomes part of your childhood programming. And then when you bring it up, it's poisoned with all the stuff that's not him, just having a momentary lapse of consciousness. You know? And so so the way that I always try to talk to women about this is if you are acting that way, like if you're in the primary emotion most of the time, which is, I'm making it sound easy, it's not. It's like, it's like spiritual fucking jujitsu to do this. Then if you are and you're emoting with an open heart, whether it's rage or grief or whatever, and he's not, you don't call more presence out of him. And that happens for, let's say, two, three, four, five, six months. Like he doesn't, like you're crying, you're you're angry, you're like hurt and you let him see that and he doesn't come to presence and hold you in a certain way and that doesn't happen consistently, then you're out. I think the terms thing is kind of a way to get out before you've actually tested whether he can do the thing that is most important, which is hold your heart, right? And I would just be curious, like the thing that I find is that many women, men too, men, men too, but women seem to be a little more adept at this is their list is huge. Like we're best friends and we're this together and we're this together and we're this together. Well, probably on that list is one thing that's like 80 fucking percent of what really matters. Like he knows how to penetrate my heart and fuck me to God, Mm -hmm. right? Or he knows how to hold my emotion and like, and and make me feel beautiful Mm -hmm. when I'm crying. Mm -hmm. Or there's something that he has that's most important that has, and if that's the case, if he's really masculine and you're really feminine, he's not going to be your best friend. Because he wants nothingness. Mm-hmm. Yeah, can we talk about the, yeah. yeah, he's not going to want to be your idea. best friend. Mm-hmm. He's Because be best friends don't want to fuck each other. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, maybe 100%. occasionally. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. But but in a marriage- Is that what you feel about best friends? Like when they're like, you're my best friend. Yeah, I, I can already, like they're dressing in the same, they have the same, we have a joke about this. Like they show up in the same sweatsuit. <laughs> you know, you can see it at workshops, right? Oh shit, like, uh, that's them. Um, uh, like yeah. That's them. And they're they don't, the best and they're, they're, there's no fuck. 100%. I can say fuck, yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. So there's no fuck in the relationship. Yeah. So for there to be fuck, one person has to release their masculine and animate their feminine. Mm. Most of the time that's the woman, but not always. It doesn't have to be always. You can go back and forth. And one person has to release their feminine and animate their masculine so that there's an arc of polarity, like, mm. like two poles on a magnet, right? Yeah. And that's when there's fuck. If there's not, you know, once you start to get to be the same and you rub against each other enough, there's no magnetism and there's no fuck. And that's because you're mainly the same. Mm. So celebrate the differences is kind of a a way of me saying like, you know, animate the thing that brings more fuck because that's kind of what we're all wanting. Mm -hmm. You know, the the other piece for women is I find that most of their emotions when they're, when they're letting them out, happen with a closed heart. And so 
rage, for example, will will happen. It's like so a true. woman will rage, right? Because he's just, you know, it's gone too far and then she's exploding and it's, again, her whole childhood mm. and everything. And her heart closes. And maybe when she hits a certain point, she'll cry. But, you know, a, I see this all the time in workshops. A woman who's raging with an open heart is sexy as fuck. Mm. Men are just dying. Like, they're, you could see them. They're just drawn to it. What's that like? Like, what is that like? It's, just like it's like dark. I mean, because the darker energies, mm-hmm, anger, rage, mm-hmm. all that stuff, That's those are the same energies mm-hmm. that make sex hot. Mm-hmm. You know? So if you can emote those with an open heart, mm. it's sexy. I know what you mean. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Like I'm raging, but tears are streaming down my face and I'm like, and my heart's wide open and I'm showing you how how yearning I am. And um, yeah, I know that's what you sexy. mean. To yep. a man. Mm-hmm. And women are always surprised. That's like by when it. you get to the point where it's makeup sex. Because you've opened the heart, you know, you yeah. maybe get past it and then you're like, okay. Yeah. Yeah. You just don't need to get to that place where you're almost breaking up. Yeah. You know totally. what I mean? Or you're killing each other. You mm-hmm. can you can be more in the moment and bring it more in the moment. But to train, you know, I talked about men's nervous systems, but for a woman to trust that in her own nervous system is a whole practice. What does it look like to emote without an open heart? So it's it's more like less emotional. It's just this is what um, no, it can be totally emotional, okay. like totally raging. Okay. But just there's no love. Mm. Right. Like so feel the difference between you mm-hmm. fucking asshole, I'm gonna kill you mm-hmm. and um and I love you so much, yeah. you're a better man than this. Mm. Like, what the fuck is wrong? Like you're a deeper man than this. It's, it's a the intention is I love you, wake up. Mm. Yeah. Versus you're just like every other fucker I've dated mm. in the last yeah. three years. Totally. And and one pulls a man in and the other makes him run for the hills. Because mm. yeah, he doesn't want to so be raged true. at. Totally. You know? So I don't know if I answered your yes. question, but yes. That's changed the game for, you know, my relationship. When my my parents growing up, it was always like my mom was just telling my dad like what she wasn't getting or, you know, mm-hmm. it was always the lack conversation. It was right. never like the positive, you know, thinking. And I think it was you who like told me with Justin, it's like starting the conversation with like, you know, you're like, I love you so much. Like you right. mean everything to me. And then kind of going into like, if there's a problem or if there's a conversation that needs to be had, but like setting the groundwork and like opening it up with like mm-hmm. something positive. Like, I love you so much. You're that person for me. Right. You are X, Y, and Z, but I'm feeling like this. Yeah. The conversation is a hundred or 360 degrees different. Yeah. It is so different when I like lay the groundwork and foundation of like, I still love you and there is this. Yeah. You know, it's crazy. Cause I would just always before be like, da 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 da. Yeah. Yeah. Or I, I love that. And I also try to teach women to say, well, I know you love me mm-hmm. and I know That's you want mm-hmm. the best for me. Mm-hmm. And I know you, and then you they're don't like, mean, yeah. I know you don't mean, you're so I know you don't mean to hilarious. hurt me. And when you do this, it really hurts. Mm-hmm. It breaks my heart. Yeah. It's a whole different conversation whole where you're not like you're sort of letting him off the hook. I mean, unless he means to hurt totally. you, which most guys don't. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, most guys want to be, you know, we want to be your heroes. Mm-hmm. Right? Like I work with a lot of men, and you know, they they there's nothing there's nothing better than being a hero for a woman that you love. Like being, and it can be simple, like just knowing what she needs to eat that night. Right or, right? and so most women are super adept at, at the complaint piece, but they're not adept at the praise and like you know worship piece. Mm-hmm. Like like wow, you really felt me. Like here's you know so men feel like you know they feel like they'll when they do something wrong they'll hear it for a long time, but when they do something right there's just a little kind of response mm-hmm. or a smile or something like that. Mm-hmm. So. If you want the best out of your man, um, praise what you trust. You know, praise what's praise when he leads you well, and praise and honor his deepest values. And if you do that, that's super. And then gift him with energy that makes him feel alive. I mean, those three things will totally endear a man to you. Yeah.